Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 646. The name of our devotional today is A Discerning Heart. The scripture reading is found in Hebrews 514 and it reads, but solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, my Lord God, that in the book of 1 Corinthians 5, 8, it says that love energizes us towards wise and pure choices when it abounds more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that we may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Sincerity and love are valuable, but to discern that only comes when we are encouraged to do what is truly right, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much, my Lord God, by the power of your word, O God. Thank you, I praise you, and thank you, my Lord God, for helping us become better at discerning, better at being wiser, better at being more mature. We thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. A discerning heart. I would like to have a $5 bill for all the times I've heard Christians back away from condemning evil by saying, I don't think it's right to judge others, although it is indeed wrong to live with a judgmental holier-than-thou attitude, it is nevertheless imperative to cultivate a discerning heart. The ability to clearly, clearly discern between right and wrong marks us as mature believers. And you can find more on um, Hebrews 5.11-14. through 14. Discernment is not developed through following external codes, but rather is brought about through the discipline of a heart that applies the revealed principles of God's Word to each life setting. It makes us wise and keeps us pure. Unfortunately, there are many false standards that destroy discernment. Sincerity is often thought to be the most important thing in determining right from wrong. Love, by many definitions, is considered to be the chief instrument in discernment. But neither love nor sincerity is at the core of wise, pure choices. They function as a godly motivator, but they do not train our hearts in discernment. At times I have taken um, tests throughout my life and Sometimes we answer questions in a test and we think that we are answering the right question when in fact we have answered the wrong question. Only to find out later that we were sincerely wrong. Helping a child tie his shoes every morning may be an expression of love, but ultimately it will hinder him if he becomes the only college freshman in his class who doesn't know how to tie his shoes. Love can be well-meaning, but it's left to itself, it can lead us astray. Sincerity and love are valuable to discernment only when they encourage us to do what is truly right. A discerning heart is fine-tuned by making consistently clear and courageous application of what is true. That is found in 1 Corinthians 5.8. And then in Philippians 1, 9 through 10, it says, Love energizes us towards wise and pure choices. When it abounds more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that we may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. The reflection questions for today is, is your discernment based on what you know to be true? Is your discernment based on what you learned in the university or based on the titles, the diplomas that you have on your wall? 
how do you feel about a particular moment or a choice that you have made? Was it a discerning one or one that was completely devoid of wisdom? Thank you, Lord, for the power of this message. Thank you for the power, my Father, that raised Jesus from the dead. Holy Spirit of God, we praise you. We thank you and we bless you. Thank you for helping us have discerning hearts, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the sunshine, play in the light. Remember to dance in the rain. But most of all, don't ever, ever forget how much God loves us, how much he loves you. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. My friend, everything has a season under the sun. There is a moment, there is a time for everything in life. And your time is now. The Bible says in Romans 10:9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Don't wait to be skinny, to be rich. Don't wait for things to be perfect, for have, to have less work or to have more work or for things to be in a different state. Don't wait one more minute to say this prayer and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much for this prayer that I am going to say. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your death and resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the Messiah, that you are the Savior of the world. And I ask you forgiveness for all of my sins. Thank you for being from this day forward, my Lord and Savior. I receive you in my heart voluntarily from my heart. Please forgive me for all the things that I have done, all the things that I have said, and all the times that I have walked away from you, thinking and saying that I don't need you when in fact I need you desperately, Jesus. I cannot do this life without you. And today, I am saying this prayer so that my life can be reconciled to you. So that from this day forward, you and I become friends. You and I become father and daughter. You and I become that union that cannot be broken by anything or anyone. Lord God, I receive you and I thank you for your blood. I promise that from this day forward, I will get to know you, I will follow you From this day forward, Lord, I will seek you every day. Help me to understand the Bible. Help me to understand everything that I need to know. Help me to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Bless my eyes, Lord. Bless my ears. Bless my mouth, Lord, so that I can represent you well, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for receiving me in the kingdom of God. Thank you, God, that through Jesus Christ today, I am your daughter. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, 
I thank you. Amen. My friend, if you've said this prayer today from your heart, be assured that there is a party in heaven for the Bible says that there is a celebration in heaven for every sinner that repents. You have taken a step towards a better life, a step towards peace, towards a better future. You have changed the legacy of your whole family from this one decision that you have made today. So I congratulate you. Many blessings to you and your family.